Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program today, we have uh, Veronica Peterson, uh, the, uh, a free speech advocate with Students for Liberty. We have David Lee, the secretary of the Placer County uh, Libertarian Party. We have John Cameron, a development officer at PLF and the author of Rewire and Reskill. Congress, the House at least, uh, passed the American Health Care Act. Is it in fact Obamacare reform or repeal? Um, good question, and and I should have read it because it's uh, uh, Obamacare or whatever in heck it was called. I like to call it Okamicare, but that's just my name for it. It was 2,400 pages that most people hadn't read. Apparently this one's uh, 117 pages with some codicils and all the rest of that. So I apologize for not having read it in its entirety. Um, the, the little bit I do know about it, there are some good things in it, and, and those good things are elimination of about 10 taxes that, uh, quite frankly, I didn't know existed. Um, the taxpayers, ta the people that pay them, no. Well, yeah, so uh, maybe, there was, there was uh, the taxes on medical devices, uh, taxes on... Um, uh, I'll, read, I'll read the list. Individual accounts. mandate, employer uh, mandate, medicine cabinet mandate, collectible spending account tax, uh, chronic care tax, HSA withdrawal tax, uh, which is a particularly odious one, 10% excise tax on tanning services, uh, health insurance tax, 3.8% uh, surtax on investment income, medical device tax, prescription medicine tax, and retiree prescription drug coverage uh, tax. So that's, that's the list. It adds up to uh, 1.1 uh, trillion, yeah, trillion dollars, dollars over the course of 10 years. Yeah, so, so it's, it's not, yeah. it's not, uh, not minuscule. And uh, Grover Norquist, uh, who's the, he's the guy that says, I want government small enough to drown in the bathtub, head of uh, Americans for tax reform. He likes it. He thinks it's a step in the right direction. Is it a step far enough in the right direction? Well, I would, I would say no, but then again, um, what passes for, for health insurance in this country isn't actually health insurance, it's prepaid medical. And uh, in the past when um, health care costs were a much smaller part of uh, GDP, um, what happened when people got sick <clears throat> is they, they paid for most things out of pocket. Um, and because there wasn't uh, uh, somebody else paying for it through many layers of insurance, um, the costs were much lower and people could afford to simply have some savings to take care of minor medical procedures. And they had uh, medical insurance, which is real insurance for catastrophic care for a uh, broken arm. Well, in, it wasn't that long ago where you could break an arm and go in and get an x-ray and have it reset for a couple hundred bucks. But yeah, now... I, I did that several times in my childhood. Because, um, because you don't really see the cost unless you ask for the cost, and the cost is passed on to these... You can't even ask for the cost. If you call the emergency room... They won't to, know. They, well, not only will they not know, they cannot tell you because it might discourage you from coming in, mm -hmm. which ironically would keep me from coming in. So they're right. This yeah. is one time where the medical no, establishment no, no. They, is they, right. They, 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 no, no, no. Their they, reason for no, not telling no. you is so you you will come. <laughs> well, the the other thing that that people um, the in order to create this massive bureaucracy and this government monopoly on health care, the the lamestream media has done a wonderful job of stating that um, of confusing the access to health care with health insurance. And, and by law, uh, anybody in this country who shows up with a medical emergency at an emergency room is treated. Yeah, and I mean, so the, when you say that these people don't have health care, they, the minute they get sick and fall down in front of the emergency room, they're going to be cared for. They don't have health care up to that point. Well, they don't have health well, insurance. It's like having a getting in a car accident and you don't have any insurance and you go into farmer's insurance and say, hey, I just got in an accident. I need to get that fixed. Can I get some insurance? Will that pay for it? Because that's really what health care insurance well, for prepaid I, conditions yeah, are. I right? mean, the, the so, whole thing. The whole so thing. that's not really, that's health care. You know, the, the issue is whether it's insurance or not. And if you're talking about major medical, you know, 10,000 uh, expenses or higher or something like that, or 5,000 or whatever you, whatever would, would be uh, a serious uh, uh, hurt if you had to pay it out of pocket, that's insurance. Mm -hmm. And that is legitimately, it can be called insurance. 
going in and get a flu shot or going in and getting, uh, you know, getting some penicillin or some, uh, you know, aspirin or whatever for your headache, for your migraine, that's not insurance. That's just, that's like paying for insurance to get an oil change for your car. That's, it's, that's the analogy I like to yeah, use. Yeah, that's good it's, just, it's silly to do it that way because it just adds the cost of insurance layered onto the cost of the medical care and increases the demand because you think you're getting it for nothing. So you're going into the doctor for things that really don't require medical attention. So it's just it's just a bad system all around, except for healthcare providers who make out like bandits. Well, as I say, isn't the problem though people that are kind of in between, um, people that need like long-term treatments or per, like preventative medicine for legitimate problems that they might have of whatever sort. Um, so instead of them just ending up in the emergency room almost dead, um, there are things that they can do to maintain their health. Um, and I think that that's really where we're running into the, this problem, this you know, health care well, versus health insurance. Yeah, the whole, the whole problem stems back to the idea, is health care a right or a, a good? Well, I think and that's a, a separate issue. It's a service. And if you have a right to something, that means you have a right to something at somebody else's expense. Well, you don't. You know, nobody has a right to somebody something at somebody else's expense. Uh, and when the whole health care turned into a crisis or began to turn into a crisis, health care was like 7% of GDP. Since, it's, since Obamacare has gone up to about 14 or 15%. Uh, I think it's actually higher this, than that. Well, maybe. Perhaps this will dial down uh, 4 or 5%. I guess that's a step in the right direction. Is it solving the problem? No. Well, let, let's talk about what... Um, I, I hate to use the UK as an example. They've had, they've had socialized medicine or from cradle to grave medical coverage for people. It's not good care. Uh, it is rationed care. It's all those things that that um, you know they say that health care shouldn't be. Yet um, their cost for comparable medical care to ours is about a third of our cost. Yeah. And so w there there are some added problems with health care in the United States, and that's the the strength of all these health care unions and all the regulatory yeah. access and everything that we have. Uh, people in not just doctors, but people throughout the healthcare industry, because of the very monopoly nature of it in this in this country, and the fact that that so many people who would provide healthcare are excluded from being able to provide it, um, it's frighteningly expensive compared to any place else in the world, and the medical outcomes aren't significantly better or or even equal to. Other countries that, and I'm not saying countries pay for it, individuals do, that are spending a, a third of the amount of their GDP, GDP on it that we are. And anytime the government gets involved in it in this country, the, uh, it is more and more about special interests than anywhere else in the world that I've ever seen. And it's about paying people off. And our everybody from medical technicians to anesthetists to uh, radiology techs to nurses to doctors if you compare the wage structure in these industries to what it is in any other country it's way way higher and to get to your point about taking care of uh, preventive care and that sort of thing there's a, an elegant but very simple solution that's been advocated by Steve Forbes among others for years which is a health savings account make uh, make it possible for people to save pre-tax money to pay for routine medical expenses and then buy insurance for major medical, and, and both problems are solved. Yeah, I think it's important, though, to address them as the issues that they actually are, though. Um, and so in this case, there does seem to be some tension as we tease out this idea of preventative care. And so it's easy to jump to other conclusions and, you know, quickly... Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what people do, but you know, it seems that we we don't really focus on one issue, um, and instead we just kind of spill into everywhere else. And I think it really kind of keeps keeps us from making yeah, steps it's, forward. It's, it's separate issues. I mean, it, because really, there's people just can't pay for anything. They can't even afford an HSA. They don't they don't work. Yeah. There's a lot of people not working. Uh, Fifty million people not yeah. working. And um, all of a sudden, like this is where the issue of you know. Does that entitle you to your money? You know, but that's another issue enti entirely. So if you have illegal immigrants, people that don't work, people on drugs, going into emergency, most expensive medical care there is on earth is emergency. And if you could 
if you could separate the issue from insurance and say, well, we're a good people, we want to take care of people that, that can't take care of themselves just because we have a big heart. Not because they have a right, because we have a big heart in this country. Mm -hmm. So we, we figure out, we, we ally ourselves with religious organizations or whatever and, and make preventative care because that's going to save less people going into emergency, the most expensive in the world that has to be subsidized by people with insurance right now. Well, there have been right? some, I, and I think this, this is, might be one kind of attempt at it. There are places where they've, in, in essence, established uh, community-sponsored, private charity-sponsored um, clinics where it's, it's a step in between routine medical visit and an emergency visit. So if you have... You're talking about community care clinics. Yeah, community care yeah. clinic. Yeah, that's another solution. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get on to some other topics. This is a much more burning issue. The, uh, the, uh, the Senate has to approve the what the House did anyway, and that's, probably, that's a, yeah, it's going a, to a reach. It's a reach. But a much more burning issue is dog walking. Uh, dog walking in Colorado. Tell us what's going on. God, there. you covered that. I have dogs. This is so important to me. <laughs> Go ahead. Will you walk my dog? No, but I don't want to pay you. Will. You can't. You yes, can't. I'll drive you can't to San Francisco. Okay, so walk in, in, in Colorado, dog. you have to. You, it, it's illegal to walk dogs for pay. Uh, there's a there's a website called Rover. Wait, or is it Rover? Uh, something like that. I yeah, use it's a Rover website called Rover, Rover where people can wonderful. network, kind of like Uber to share cars. Yeah. You can you can share people to take care of your animals. You can do it of, in your house. You can yeah. do it in their house. You mm -hmm. can you know any of the, whatever the people that connect on Rover uh, come up with as a solution for getting Rover walked. Rover, you know that'll work, mm -hmm. but it's illegal in Colorado. Why is that, Veronica? Well, from what I understand, um, it's they they're considering people with dogs in their house to be kennels. Um, and you have to have a license that costs something like four hundred dollars um, in order to, you know, have walk a dog. Well, and I think I don't know all the details. I think one of the features of Rover is though that you can um, have somebody watch. You yeah. can watch somebody's dog you in your dog home. Can dogs sit or cats sit? Yeah, yeah. In, in your house or in their house. Yeah. And in, in order to get a license, and you want to take care of a dog in your house, you cannot have floors covered with carpet or hardwood. Why they came up with that, I have no idea. But, but tile's that, okay. I guess, I don't know. Yeah, because that's what's in kennels, right? So, so it's a power play. <laughs> so what it is, it's, yeah, it's, crony, I, it's crony capitalism, you know, the government getting together with the special interests, which in this case are the, the kennel associations and the kennels, because they, they don't want like Uber to take over the cabs. They don't want Rover to take over kennels. And, which is a very lucrative business. Yeah, it's the same, it's the same licensing scam when you have crony capitalism, basically. I mean, you, in California, you have to have a license to do acupuncture, right? You have to have a license to uh, do pedicures. You, you have, have to have a have license for landscaping. <laughs> Go with it's, it's you have to have a great. license to issue licenses in California. <laughs> yeah, do you have to have a license to get a license? <laughs> yeah. In Puerto Rico, uh, they have another problem. In Puerto Rico, well, they've, they've declared bankruptcy. It's the largest declaration of bankruptcy in the United States, including territory history. It's, of course, a territory. $123 billion in debt, uh, just to put that into perspective, when, 18, when uh, Detroit declared bankruptcy, they were at 18 billion, so it's like five times bigger, or six times bigger. Uh, 74 billion of that is bond debt, so if you own uh, Puerto Rican municipal bonds, good luck. Uh, another $49 billion in pension debt. Where have we heard that story before that's and it, that's going forward? It's the first territory to declare bankruptcy and the largest bankruptcy in, in, uh, in government history. Is this a picture of, uh, of uh, bad things to come uh, you know, in other territories and in other states and municipalities? Well, when you said $49 billion in pension debt, I would say that's like, like a, a, not even a big fraction of the unfunded pension debt in the state that begins with a C and ends in Fornia. Um, <laughs> and we live here. And if you look at the unfunded liability for, for CalSTRS and CalPERS, and all the rest of it, I don't remember the number, but it sure makes forty-nine billion look like a look like a Fred. Does anybody know the number? It's no, like it's a trillion. Yeah, but, it's yeah, it's it, a huge it's, yeah. it's a huge number, and uh, this is writing on the wall. And anybody that doesn't recognize it is um, uh, either a, a Democrat pushing or, it to, or pushing it to the next yeah, uh, election. Yeah, or just kick the, the can down the road, um, and um, I'm hoping that. Uh, they, they changed the law for standing 
and that uh, the, the grandchildren of uh, the people that are saddled with this debt can turn around and sue the generation that was stupid enough to saddle them with it because that's the, the only thing that's going to stop it. You want to it. sue Grandpa. Huh? Sue Grandpa okay. for, for being stupid enough to go along with us. So, um, you know, when you can kick the can down the road uh, and just keep printing money, this is the kind of thing happens. So um, I'm really, I'm going to be really curious about what the response of the federal government is if they choose to bail them well, out. Well, yeah, the federal government and the Federal Reserve are the only powers that can print money. If a state goes bankrupt or a territory goes bankrupt, they don't have the power to print money. They, they, they're going to have to appeal to the court to get debt forgiveness. There's going to be pain at the end of that, like you said, bondholders. Yeah. Um, and, or they can appeal or, to the federal, or, or federal government to borrow more money and print more money to pay and, and the debt. Yeah. But, but it's, it's a, a snowball debt, because uh, we know the biggest debt of all is the federal debt. Um, and, and that's going to, you know, that's going to bust too at some point. Uh, moving on to another uh, finance related issue. Uh, we've already postponed uh, budget uh, negotiation for, for one week, and uh, Trump uh, came up with a, uh, a budget plan. I think it was on one sheet of paper. It was an outline. It was, you know, it was, it was silly. Crayon or? <laughs> yeah, well, no, I think it was a, a magic marker. I'm not, but anyway. Disappearing ink? There you go. That's, that's the best analogy I've heard yet. Rand Paul called the budget deal, he said it should be renamed the Status Quo Protection Act is is uh, uh, Rand uh, right on that? It was well. It's he, he it's well put by Rand Paul. Um, however, we also have to remember historically that when a new president comes into town, historically that new president will will be okay with the budget because that budget really was developed prior to his becoming uh, sworn in as president. So Bush did it. Um, so did. Obama pretty much pushed through the, the old Bush budget the first time. It's the second budget, I think it comes in what, September? Uh, September, October, then there's going to be another uh, timetable to, to pass another budget. That's where you dig in your heels, and it'll give Trump some time. But there was, some, there was a little bit of movement within it. Uh, the Democrats got something. Trump got some military spending in it. There was some wiggle, but it was basically you know, business as usual. Um, as far as there was no real change in this budget, it, it was kick the can down the road. But that's kind of historical whenever there's a change in regimes in uh, Washington, D.C. Well, the, the warfare intelligence security state got well-funded. Uh, the, the regulatory agencies, Trump is trying to trim a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Good luck with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, the uh, social welfare programs are you know, business as usual, no changes at all. Mm -hmm. I kind of, going back a little bit, um, I don't know. It seems like we just never learn. Um, and, you know, I, I, I was a little bit surprised about uh, Puerto Rico. And I don't know if it's just I live in a bubble um, or what. Um, but is this, like, how come this hasn't been in everybody's conversations that Puerto Rico is doing so badly? Well, Puerto Rico is far enough away from... We don't... Far enough offshore well, we, that we don't really pay that much attention to it. But it's been in the news yeah, for uh, a good 10, 15 years. I've been watching it. From afar, because you know California is set up to do the same thing, really. I mean, well, yeah. it's, so, it's a, but, so if it's been going on for ten or fifteen years, um, I mean, maybe people haven't been taking it seriously, and so people, younger people like me, wouldn't even like. It just doesn't make the headlines, like uh, yeah, we old folks. It doesn't make the well headlines, like, yeah. people, like the latest Kardashian, uh, uh, whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really disturbing, though. Um, especially, you know, it's it's one thing for it to always be, you know, kind of. Oh, you know, the fear mongering, right? It's really easy to fear monger. And I think a lot of people, especially when we talk about pensions, you know, they feel it's a fear mongering type, you know, tactic. Um, but now here, this is, this is very real. Um, it's, we can't deny this anymore. Um, so we really have to face our problems. Yep. And so um, I wonder if we will learn anything. I wonder. I'm guessing, I'm guessing not until, I, until we see some more. Well, I think, see, this is, the, here, here's what we We've yeah. talked about this occasionally on the show, that what really worries me is that the federal government's going to step in, and because it's so hopeless, you're right, states can't print money, but the federal government could guarantee that state debt and, and therefore say, if you get in trouble, we're going to print money. So what that would do would kick it down the road even further, 
and give these states license to be even worse uh, caretakers of their budgets than they are now. And that would, um, that would make it a whole lot worse. And so that's why, and the, and that's why he it. wants to sue Grandpa, because the millennials are going to have to pay for it. Right? And, the, and right. the model for that is right in front of us from uh, the 2008 financial crisis. What happened is the Federal Reserve started buying all of the lousy, uh, bankrupt debt from the, uh, the mortgage originators. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, the, uh, the mortgage loans that were all bad, they, start, they, they bought them up and they still hold them. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they, you know, there's no reason why, at all why the Fed could they not used start them buying for, municipal They used debt. them for kindling. Now, could not buy yeah. bad municipal debt, and oh, no problem solved. No problem here. Don't you know? Don't you know? Keep 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 on moving. No problem here. <laughs> uh, FBI Director uh, James Comey uh, came out or was testifying before Congress uh, last week and said that uh, WikiLeaks is intelligence porn. When did the FBI director become a journalistic critic? Is what I want to know. Well, I, I can say there are some similarities because I get pretty excited reading the WikiLeaks stuff. So I can see why he would, uh, he would call you, it porn. Um, no, I'm... Um, James Comey has a, has a vested interest in uh, not being exposed for the turd that he is. And WikiLeaks exposes these people over and over and over again for, for, for violating the Constitution of the United States, for repeatedly lying, uh, for uh, saying one thing one day and another thing another day, for the favoritism and all the rest of that. So what you do is, it's like the whole fake news thing. You, you start, um, and what will happen is the lamestream media will pick it up, and, and the, the uh, status quo will be reinforced and it will all go on behind closed doors, WikiLeaks. Uh, I think um, Assange should get the Medal for Freedom. Well, uh, the Medal I, of Honor, I, I, think, I think actually uh, Snowden should get the Nobel Prize for, for uh, peace or something like that. Mm -hmm. And Assange should, be, you know, should get, a, get a Medal of Freedom. Well, yeah. I mean, Although he's yeah. not American. But, uh, uh, well, I don't, I, don't, I mean, uh, uh, Obama gave the freedom medal out to some pretty strange people. I think yeah. as long as you were a former member of the Communist Party and rebel rouser, you were up for the medal. So well, I think it's just um, a distraction. Yeah. I mean, because when you have the IRS weaponized to go after conservative groups, Tea Party groups, yeah. um, and nothing came of that. The, the, the head of that fiasco was pleaded the fifth. Nothing's happened to that person. Retirement, full pay. Um, you have the Clinton email scandals. There was a lot of illegality there. And the illegality has been totally ignored, and the attack by the press has been on the bearer of bad news yeah. for Hillary. Yeah. yeah. That is but. so frustrating. Mm -hmm. So frustrating. Um, we haven't heard anything about Chelsea Manning in a long time. Um, Chelsea is still in prison. Getting out soon, though, huh? Or I hadn't heard that. There, well, I, I, I thought that... Right when Trump was elected, or right before Trump? Remind, I'm drawing a point. There was talk about Obama. Bradley, Bradley yeah, Manning. I think the... Bradley Manning, not Chelsea Manning. He was a whistleblower yeah, he uh, prior to Snowden. The, the taxpayer paid for his sex change operation. and. Uh, oh, okay. And so right, he was that's somewhat of a favorite of... Uh, of Obama, and I think he may have pardoned. Him. I think that I think that Obama pardoned him, and I thought that um, he had or she had to serve some period of time yeah. after the pardon, and I think um, it should be coming up soon. Yeah. But people yeah. were yeah, speculating, right. you know, well, what is Trump going to do about this? And you know, this should be infuriating to Trump, and um, and I haven't heard anything. Um, the thing that I find disturbing about all of this uh, attack on WikiLeaks, attack on Snowden attack on uh, essentially journalism, uh, anything that criticizes the government, is this. Uh, CIA Director Mike Pompeo uh, also has been attacking Assange and calling him a traitor and uh, calling for his uh, uh, imprisonment or execution or what, I'm not sure exactly, but you know, calling him a very bad person. The disturbing part is not so much that he's doing that, but that uh, A, he was he was applauding WikiLeaks when, he, when, when WikiLeaks was going after Hillary. Now that he, WikiLeaks is going after Trump, not so much. The second thing that bothers me about that is Mike Pompeo is the Koch's boy in Washington. And if the Kochs are supporting somebody, 
that is that uh, fickle and that uh, willing to compromise with evil, I worry a lot. Yeah, that's definitely definitely a concern. And, and the, politi the politicalization and the ignorance, or not the ignorance, but the, the lack of uh, fortitude to, to actually enforce laws by our FBI, by our CIA, uh, has caused a crisis of uh, confidence in the in the people. And um, you know, I think that that if most people really l look at it, they're going to realize, like you said, that that WikiLeaks and Julian Assange and and people like Eric Snowden, they are journalists. And uh, who's to say what's top secret and not top secret? Yeah. Um, and and the fact that that the the CIA or the FBI or some administrator will leak certain things to, for political gain. And Snowden and Assad are you know, very yeah, articulate yeah, yeah. and very, uh, very libertarian or at least libertarian-ish yeah. uh, individuals. So what's the difference between uh, Woodward and Bernstein mm -hmm. yeah. awards? Right. They for exposing... The, they work for the Washington Post. That's for, the difference. For exposing uh, illegality. And they, yeah, and they exposed a Republican as opposed to a Democrat. Yeah. But in this case... I'd like to do one more fun topic. Uh, before we just nuclear time. war, or? no, it's, it's <laughs> fun. You've heard the phrase. I don't agree with the thing you say, but I defend to the death your right to say it. Well, that applies to Code Pink. I don't agree with much of what they have to say, but I do uh, defend their right to say it and to laugh in a congressional hearing. Code Pink, uh, Code Pink's Des Desiree Farouk faces six months in jail or if she doesn't want to go to jail, a thousand dollar fine for laughing out loud when Senator. Richard Shelby said in uh, Session's uh, retirement uh, confirmation hearing for Attorney General that, quote, all Americans, uh, the Sessions, uh, Jeff Sessions treats all Americans equally under the law. Uh, uh, Desiree thought that was funny. She laughed. She was arrested. And she's now facing a $1,000 fine or six months in jail. What's wrong with this picture? Well, she, her laugh. Don't was, laugh. Oh, yeah, her, her laugh was really basically <laughs> the, 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 like everybody knows Jeff Sessions is a racist. Why would you say something silly like that? And that's why she felt it, it felt it funny. But you're right. You know, she has a right to, to her free speech and her free laugh. However, there are certain times when decorum is you know in place, like in, in a courtroom and things like that. Absolutely not a reason to fine her. What was it? Thousand dollars. She wanted to out of the room because she's creating a disturbance. Fine, a fine. And, and six months in jail, right? Or That's, or yeah, or either or. That's the show. We're out of time. Thank you very much for being part of the show. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place, on the Libertarian.